To navigate through the air, aircraft utilize flaps known as control surfaces. The primary control surfaces consist of the ailerons, elevator, and rudder. When the control surface is rotated, the flow around the wing changes, which imposes an aerodynamic force. The aerodynamic force causes the plane to rotate about one of its axes. These are known as the pitch, roll, and yaw axes. The primary flight controls, shown in blue, are used to control the aircraft's rotation about these axes. The secondary controls are used for finer adjustments and give more control to the pilot. Modern commercial aircraft, such as the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, utilize composite materials for their high strength and low weight. The reduction in weight allows for higher fuel efficiency and better flight performance. The 787 Dreamliner features a carbon fiber fuselage and wing structure. This allows the aircraft to consist of 50% composite materials. The use of carbon fiber in the wing structure necessitates a redesign of the control surface actuation systems. In conventional aluminum wing structures, the hydraulic actuator can be mounted directly to the wing structure as shown here. Aerodynamic forces imposed on the control surface are reacted through the actuator and transversely into the aluminum wing structure. Composite wing structures, on the other hand, cannot handle transverse loading due to their anisotropic nature. This necessitates a new actuator design, the reaction link actuator. In this case, forces are reacted into the metal control surface hinge instead of the composite wing structure. The kick link, or short link, allows the actuator to rotate and minimizes the forces reacted into the wing structure. This design allows for an 80% reduction in the force reacted into the wing structure. Our project sponsor, Woodward, has provided the professional guidance and resources needed to design and build a prototype reaction link actuator. Our goal is to aid Woodward in the development of a prototype reaction link flight control actuator to inform future designs and help increase the efficiency of commercial aircraft. This includes the design, analysis, procurement support, and test support of the system, with an emphasis on manufacturability and the reduction of weight and cost. Here we have a COVID-friendly picture of our senior design team. My name is Jake and I'm standing here at the left. To the right is Eric, Andrew, and Kyle. One of the most beneficial aspects of this project was the experience of working with the professional engineers at Woodward. We participated in weekly meetings with the Woodward team to discuss our progress as well as gain clarification or guidance moving forward. In addition, we were in fairly consistent communication through email for support and project updates. Due to the nature of the project, the CSU team became familiar with both aerospace and military standards for our design. And through all of this, we became much more familiar with what a professional engineer workflow actually looks like. Our project was separated into three phases. Phase one was the preliminary design phase where we took the requirements documents and statement of work provided by Woodward to create a preliminary design. Trade studies were used to assess the options for different design features. Phase two was the detailed design phase where our design was finalized based upon feedback from Woodward. This included a complete drawing package and a full stress analysis. Phase three is the assembly and testing of the unit. This included finalization of the test plan and creation of assembly tooling. Assembly is under aid and guidance from the Woodward team at the Woodward facility with the completed unit being handed off for testing. Here we have the objectives and constraints for the actuator. As with many aerospace systems, it is important to minimize weight and cost while preserving manufacturability. Load requirements feature a maximum functional load of 3,800 pounds in compression and 2,800 pounds in tension. Ultimate load is not to exceed 150% of that. There are also requirements for actuator stroke, environmental durability, and material use. Here's an example of a trade study matrix. We created several of these to assess our options on the more open-ended design decisions. We created a list of criteria for each with a weight based upon importance. That was then assessed against a score for each option to create a final viability rating. These ratings helped inform decisions in our final design. Here's the final CSU Woodward Reaction Link Linear Actuator. The actuator features heat-treated stainless steel components for high strength and corrosion resistance. 
aerospace grade bearings and fasteners secure the actuator components and allow it to interface with the control services and wing structure. A simple compact design allows for ease of manufacturing while taking up less space and weight in the plane. Now let's take a look at the inside. The team repurposed an old helicopter piston into a modern actuator. The internal dimensions of the helicopter cylinder have been modified to be more condensed and reduce points of failure. To actuate the control surfaces, fluid is poured through the small grooves on the inside of the cylinder, and as the chambers fill up with fluid, the piston is pushed by the pressure, extending and retracting. Combined with a computer, you can control the exact position of the cylinder down to a thousandth of an inch. And notice the slight rotation of the kick link as the actuator moves in and out. With the help of Woodward's rapid prototyping network, our team was able to take our SOLIDWORKS designs and produce professionally machined parts. The actuator housing was one of our more complicated parts, and here we can see an example of its progress. The machining process for all our custom parts took place during the majority of the spring semester, from late January to April. To finish off the semester, the prototype will be fitted and assembled before being run through some testing procedures. With the help of Woodward, a previous testing fixture was redesigned to aid in the testing of this prototype. Basic pressure, leakage, and actuator stroke testing will be done to make sure the prototype was machined and assembled correctly. To test the functionality, the prototype will be extended and retracted while forces are applied to a simulated control surface by a load cell. These will simulate the same forces that the actuator would experience if it was in use by an aircraft. By doing these tests, it will verify that the prototype's behavior was consistent with the analysis conducted in the design phase, as well as ensure that the prototype meets the requirements of the project. After these testing procedures are done, the prototype will be evaluated on its performance. At that time, our portion of the project will be concluded and it will be handed over to Woodward. Based on the testing evaluation, further work for Woodward could include redesigning the current prototype to correct any issues from testing, as well as further testing for requirements outside this project's scope of work.